and a welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Happy to be here with you in this edition of the Dolphin Dive. And you know, in our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership with the Lemoyne College Dolphins, we have the opportunity to tell you the stories of the Dolphins during Dolphin Time Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and of course, at all different parts throughout the season, under promise, over deliver. And what season? All seasons, including the off season, because as Nick knows, there is no off season. So with that being said, I'm picture in picture with Nick DePillo here. And Nick has been on the show many times. We got to do the exclusive of him on the heels of getting the job as the women's basketball head coach at Lemoyne. We also got to speak with him about his staff. We got to speak with his staff and uh, also got to talk about a lot of other things, including recruiting. Now we get to speak on the 2024-25 schedule, the recently announced tip-off dinner, and more. So uh, to one of my uh, very easy to pick uh, favorite people in the community, even though he's been here for five seconds, you know, you, you go you go by like energy and you go by positive vibes. So Nick DePillo, you already know Nick, but you're pretty okay in my book. How are you? <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, you and I, uh, in, in the last time that we spoke, uh, you added another mouth to feed in the home. You got another member of your family. So I've seen some pictures. I, I will say that I, I think that if you haven't yet, you might get a phone call from one of the major department stores to be that family that they put on the inside of the photo frame. So maybe that's a little side hustle for you. But what's life like, Ben, with uh, one more to the DePillo? Yeah, family? I mean, you know, piggybacking off of that, I am always up for the highest bidder. So if any <laughs> anybody out there is listening and wants to, uh, you know, take our picture and throw in the picture frame, you know, we're here for it. I like that. Uh, you know, it's been, you know, it's been great. You know, Antonia is... Uh, two and a half, almost three months old now. Um, you know, she, she's the good sleeper in the family. It's, it, it's my two and a half year old who, uh, who spends more time keeping us up, but it's been, uh, it's been a blessing. You know, it's, it's been a blessing, um, kind of getting everybody settled up here, you know, which obviously we have in the last, you know, a couple months. Um, and then, you know, just getting ready to roll in the season. Um, you know, but knowing I get to come home to them every night is, uh, is definitely a blessing for us. And you mentioned Little Miss Antonia, and just for you, I mean, what that moment for you, because, you know, obviously each child is different in the moments are different. The memories are going to be unique and they're going to be etched in, in your history forever. So when you first held Antonia, bring me into that moment for you. Yeah, it, it was insane because uh, she came a little bit earlier and a little bit quicker than, um, you know, I think what was originally planned. Um, so I think there was just so much going on in the moment where, you know, you're on your way to the hospital, you're checking in, you're getting set up. And literally, when I tell you 60 minutes later, um, you know, she was out. So it was, uh, you know, I think the first thing you're always, you know, holding your breath, you know, is she happy, is she healthy, is the doctors give the thumbs up. And then once you do, then you're just... You know the moment's surreal. Um, the uh, uh, you know the feelings, everything you feel is it, it, it's a rush, it's a rush of emotions, and it's really just about all right. You know, take it day by day, change the first diaper, give the first feeding. Uh, you know, making sure I'm present for my wife, and um, you know, making sure my son and my other daughter are, are equally as um, you know uh, attended to as needed. And uh, you know, it's been hasn't stopped since, you know, the craziness, the craziness has continued. That's to say the least. So when I said we were going to talk about the 2024, 25 schedule, you didn't know it had nothing to do with basketball. Your, your wife actually <laughs> called me and said that we're setting up a schedule for you. So uh, listen, we, someone <laughs> needs to, someone needs to, I'm just, I'm just winging it right now. So, I mean, obviously having a baby in the off season is, is a good time to have a baby, but how have you kind of addressed like you have a newborn, you have a new job, you were hired in the 11th hour coming into Lemoyne. So going to the transfer portal, figuring out your staff, like everything personally and professionally has happened at a rapid pace for you. And then you and I are going to kind of take one spin around and the season's going to be here. So how have you addressed the juggling act before the season starts of, you know, being a dad to a third child as well as making sure that you had everything else in place and your ducks in a row. I mean, I've talked to your staff. 
I, I've known Katie for a million years, but you know, speaking with Maya as well as Casey, I, I feel like you've really put together a, a genuinely exciting staff that I'm looking forward to seeing. So how have you kind of put this all together and has it, even though it was rapid paced, was it in a way its own kind of poetic timing? Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't think anything is by accident in this world, right? I, I think there is a plan. I think there, there is, there is um, timing that's, that's meant to be uh, for everything. Uh, you know, I think the, the, the broad answer is, you know, I couldn't have done it without, you know, my wife and my family being so supportive um, of everything. So obviously moving, from the Midwest out here and, you know, having a baby and you know, all this stuff that gets, has to be taken care of from a personal standpoint. Um, like you said, filling out a roster and hiring a staff and, and getting acclimated to the day to day, um, you know, at Lemoyne, um, you know, I, I think once, once I accepted the job, I knew any plans I had were probably out the window. <laughs> it was just about attacking what's in front of you yeah. um, on that given day. Um, you know, fortunately, you know, on those long drives from Ohio to New York and, and, you know, back and forth to, you know, move out of my place and find a new one and go down to Jersey. You know, you have a lot of time to think and make calls and, you know, kind of get organized and get your ducks in a row with everything. Um, you know, I was fortunate to hire a, a really good staff and uh, fill out fill out uh, the rest of the roster who returned some really talented players and, and high-level people with even more talented players and high level people. Um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, a combination of, you know, just putting putting your nose to it and, and grinding it out, um, establishing relationships through the business through many years um, and, and being at a place that attracts good people, um, whether that be student athletes or, or staff that I work with, you know, all those things have kind of helped they come together um, to where we are today. Yeah. So, I mean, when you see, and, and to go back to the staff for a second, you as the head coach hiring your assistants, uh, Katie Kalinske staying on, who came last year under Mary Grimes, and then Casey Filio coming in with you as well as Maya Jackson. How have you looked at where their focuses are going to be? If if we're defining the roles of Katie and Casey and Maya, uh, kind of paint the picture of what this staff looks like as you know because obviously you're a sum of its parts you know that's what a team is where have you asked each of them to focus yeah you, you know all three of them um have their own strengths and weaknesses and experiences and backgrounds uh, but you know if there's one thing that the three of them have been really been tasked with it, it's being present for our players every day uh, you know meeting them where they are figuring out what they need, what does their development on and off the floor in the classroom look like? Yeah. Um, because without those relationships and establishing that and pouring um, ourselves and, and them themselves into that, um, none of the other stuff really matters. Um, and that kind of extends over into the recruiting uh, piece as well. Because obviously, you know, not only do we have to fill out a roster for this year, it's you're, you're a little bit behind the eight ball with the 2025 class and obviously further classes. Um, so it's really the personality piece and, and digging into the who and the why and, the, and, and you know, figuring out what makes our current players, uh, our incoming players who are now new on this roster, and then that next class of, of young women who we're bringing in in 25, like what makes them tick? Do they fit the way we want to do things? Um, do they match up from a character and work ethic standpoint? Um, so it, it's really that, you know, the, the, the X's and O's, that, that stuff kind of figures itself out. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we're all experienced enough. I have a, I have a pretty good feel for how um, I, I want to see the game being played. Um, but, you know, the one thing I've realized through 20 plus years of doing this, um, if there's not an ultimate investment from the coach's office to the locker room, um, and it has to be genuine, um, but if it's not there, none of the other stuff matters. There's a lot of ways to be successful on offense, a lot of ways to be successful on defense. Um, but if, if we're not genuinely, truly invested um, in the growth of our young women, um, you know, none, none of it really matters. So that, that's been the biggest thing that uh, Katie, Casey, and Maya have been really tasked with. And, and they've, I want to say, risen to the challenge, but that, that's just who they are as people. So I, I think it's just uh, allowing them to be themselves. Nick DiPillo here with us in this edition of the Dolphin Dive. We're going to dive right back into it and into this schedule right after this fast break. 
this is Amy from Mother's Cupboard, home of the whole frittata. We are open daily, 6 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. For takeout orders, call 315-432-0942. And tune in to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora for our monthly food challenge and try our Wake Up Call signature menu item available seven days a week. Here at Mother's Cupboard, we are Central New York, and it's our honor to serve you. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory remind us that every day is worth celebrating at 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York. Open Monday through Saturday in-store and always online at maandpazpopcorn.com. Serving our Central New York community and beyond, order anywhere, anytime at maandpazpopcorn.com. Stop in to get a tin at Ma and Pa's on 201 7th North Street in Liverpool, New York to get your half-price refills for the rest of your life. Come to Ma and Pa's for your holiday gift giving for family, friends, employees, and clients. And remember for fundraising and events to call 315-450-6272. That's 315-450-6272. Ma and Pa's Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory. How corny are you? This is Jimmer Sikowski, owner-operator of Chick-fil-A Cicero, 7916 Brewerton Road in Cicero, right in front of the Home Depot. I had a deep feeling that God wanted me to do something bigger with my life and to help people, help others. I kept putting Chick-fil-A in my life, and I realized as I was going through the franchise selection process that uh, positively impacted the lives of others was really core to what we do here at Chick-fil-A. First of all, it starts with the food. The food is brought in fresh daily, and we bring in local produce, we prepare to order in the kitchen, we hand bread our chicken, we hand spin our milkshakes, it's, it's great food, it doesn't taste like fast food. I, I think the second thing is is the way people feel when they come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant, it's different. We, we try to treat people with intentional kindness here, which is very different and deeper than good customer service, and so you know, I think it feels remarkable for most people to come in a Chick-fil-A restaurant. And then lastly, the impact that we try to have in the community is very different. It's a big part of the expectation of every operator of a Chick-fil-A restaurant is that they're actively engaged in their community, they're a leader in the community, and they're, they're making a difference. When they realize that what we're striving to do is to shine a little light in their life, that's a very, very different experience uh, than you will have in any other quick service restaurant. And it's that remarkable experience that I think people will emotionally connect with. In these unique times, there are those in our community that give us a sense of normalcy and positivity. Pizza Man on 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville has been here for you for over 35 years and is here now. Call 315-638-1234 or order online at pizzamanbville.com to bring those familiar tastes into your home. And remember to come see our monthly on-site broadcasts centered around the community and our Baldwinsville Bees. Pizza Man in Baldwinsville. Any way you slice it, they are always here for you. Looking for your next ride? Look no further than Great Lakes Honda City, located on 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard in Liverpool, New York. Serving our community for decades, their new and pre-owned vast array of vehicles are available to you Monday through Saturday on site. To search from home, shop at GreatLakesHondaCity.com. Call 315-365-5576 to set up an appointment. That's 315-365-5576 for Great Lakes Honda City, 7140 Henry Clay Boulevard in Liverpool, New York. Great cars, great people, great lakes. All right, you need to come out here and get yourself the Brooklyn Pickle. I was talking about this with one of my buddies. I was like, yo... There's no better sandwich in the state of New York than the Brooklyn Pickle. And now that I found out that they're going down to North Carolina, 
We are taking over your taste buds everywhere you are, wherever you're gonna be. You need to get yourself out to the Brooklyn Pickle Pinehurst. You just realized that you found yourself the best sandwich shop that you're ever gonna have. This is a glorious moment. It's a blessing to your community. You're welcome. Brooklyn in the house, baby. Go over to the Brooklyn Pickle. You already know what it is. You heard the man. Head to Brooklyn Pickle Pinehurst on 1788 Old Morgantown Road in Southern Pines, North Carolina. And a welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports truly meets that thing called life. Here in this edition of the Dolphin Dive with Nick DePillo, the Lemoyne Dolphins women's basketball head coach, and jumping in to diving in to that 2024-25 schedule that starts off with an exhibition against SUNY Geneseo at Ted Grant Court on October 29th, just eight days after my birthday. Then they head on the road to California. So they're not the only school in Syracuse, New York, that feels the need to have that California connection now. You got the ACC on both coasts, and you got the first game that counts this season for LeMoyne Dolphins women's basketball at Stanford University visiting the Cardinal before facing off at Stony Brook and then coming home for their first home game, University of Rhode Island. So let's start there, Nick. Just bring me into the first game that counts, November 4th. It's a Monday night. It's going to be at 10 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Pacific, starting out in California. And then the first home game, which will be a noon tip-off on a Sunday, November 10th, against Rhode Island. So first road, first home, bring me into those. Yeah. You know, um, our players have an opportunity to go out, um, to one of the premier programs, um, in, in women's college basketball, you know, for us, it's a tremendous opportunity. Um, you know, I think twofold, you know, you, you, you want to look back on those remember when moments when you, when you look back on your season and your college career, um, and, and playing at Stanford, in front of what's sure to be a, um, you know, a, a really um, packed crowd, you know, it being the first game since Coach Vanderveer retired, um, you know, that, that's going to be a great opportunity for, for our players to play in front of, um, like I said, a, a huge crowd in, in, in a venue that's truly historic for women's college basketball, um, to, for a program that you couldn't really talk, tell the history of women's college basketball without talking about Sanford. Uh, and it gives us an opportunity to see where we are from a competitive standpoint. Uh, you know, I think regardless of the opponent we play, um, whether it's our first exhibition, our first road game, or fast forward to sometime in March when we play our last game of the season, um, you know, we, we have a, a vision and a belief in our program that um, when the buzzer, the final buzzer sounds, that our opponent's going to feel us after playing against us for 40 minutes. And, and the score will take care of itself. Uh, but, you know, we, we definitely... Um, are excited about the opportunity to go out there and put our best foot forward um, and, and see where we land. Um, obviously, fly across country the, the next day and a couple of days later play at, at Stony Brook, another program who, um, as far as mid-majors go, has been as successful as they come uh, these last few years. Um, new coach, uh, new roster, yeah. but again, a team that's won 20-plus games the last few years and has had uh, postseason success. Um, it's, it's, an, it's a level that we hope to grow our program to, you know, over these next few years. Um, and then to come home and open up against Rhode Island, another mid-major team that, that's had their share of wins, um, you know, over the last few years and postseason successes. Um, so again, you know, the schedule set up for us to have an opportunity to compete and, and see where we are. So we're unbelievably excited for that. Um, you know, I, I think our schedule allows us to, um, uh, come up against some of the better, high major and, and mid-major programs uh, in the country through this non, non-league non schedule. Um, so, you know, we're, we're excited to figure out who we are. Uh, you know, I, I think that's probably one of the more exciting things um, that's been going in our practices these first, I think tomorrow's our 10th practice, um, you know, figuring out who we are and, and implementing the style that we want to play and, and getting acclimated to it. Do you And so your first home game, University of Rhode Island on Sunday, November 10th at noon Eastern time, do you know or have you crossed paths with Tammy Reese? Because she's actually a good friend of many years back as she was an assistant at Syracuse before becoming a head coach at Rhode Island. So have you crossed paths with her before? 
Yeah, absolutely. Over the, over the years, um, and then even more recently this summer, um, her and Katie Kalinsky are pretty good friends. So um, when the three of us were together on the road, had an opportunity to uh, you know talk a little bit and chat some um, from afar. Um, unbelievable amount of respect for her playing and coaching career. Um, you know what she's done as an assistant and now as a head coach. Um, it's it's it, it's been it's phenomenal. Um, so I'm excited to uh, have an opportunity to share a court with her and and have an opportunity for for our young women to compete against ours. Yeah, and in these, when we look at the month of November, the first few weeks of November, your road, road, home, road, road, before you head farther away, and we'll get to that in a second, but you're going to have back-to-back days in the state of Illinois against Illinois State University and the University of Illinois on November 17th and 18th. Bring me into this Illinois trip and obviously making the most of it with back-to-back opponents there in the middle of November. Yeah, so, you know, it gives us an opportunity to play two competitive games against two really good teams. Uh, Illinois State, again, one of the better mid-major uh, teams in the country in the MVC. Um, and then to go have an opportunity, and that'll be, I think, a Sunday afternoon game. And then the next morning, actually, um, it's it's Illinois school day or kids day, whatever they call it, game. Um, you know, Coach Green, I've known Coach Green for, for a bunch of years. Uh, you know, unbelievable amount of respect for her. She's done a terrific job since she took over Illinois a couple of years ago. Um, you know, they'll be either preseason, if not at some point during the year, you know, a top 20, top 25 team in the country. So, um, you know, different style than, than Stanford and some of the other teams on our schedule. Um, their guard play is going to be absolutely terrific and they have a really good front line. Um, but again, for us, just another opportunity to compete against, you know, the best of the best. Um, again, I think that's why, um, you know, when you're, when you're a mid-major school, it's what you want your non-conference schedule to look like to give yourself an opportunity to compete against um, the Illinois of, of the world um, to kind of see where we are and, and give us uh, for it to be a real litmus test of what we have to do as we continue to go through not only the rest of November into December, but eventually into, into our league um, where – uh, obviously, that's what all this is building up toward. Nick DiPillo here with me in this edition of the Dolphin Dive on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership with LeMoyne College here in year four in that partnership and here with the LeMoyne women's basketball head coach. This is the real thing that I had circled. I mean, we're talking about other stuff, but, you know, I, I have a, a Spanish background, have, have that blood. I know that uh, you're going to... Puerto Rico for the Puerto Rico Classico, and uh, that is featuring Lemoyne as well as UNC Greensboro, who you will face on November 29th on a Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and then on Saturday, November 30th at 10:30 a.m. Eastern Time, the University of Southern Indiana. So, with me already having Spanish flavor that's run running in my veins, you and I have already built a friendship. I just want to know, like, do I have a seat on the plane? Am I taking care of what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you always got a seat everywhere we go. Don't you worry about that. It's, uh, it's, it's not going to be a bad way to spend uh, Thanksgiving f- for for our players. So we're we're excited about the trip. Uh, I'm excited about the opportunity to play against um, a couple really good opponents. Um, doing it in a warm weather climate, not going to be the worst thing in the world. So, um, you know, hopefully we have an opportunity to play well in some of those early games and, uh, you know, enjoy some good food and some good weather, um, you know, while we're down there. Yeah, you know, and then you're back home. And we look at, I mean, we're talking about one home game against the University of Rhode Island, and that's going to have it. So for when the season starts officially on November 4th, we're not going to see you back at home until over a month later on December 5th. And then we get to see you against Boston University, University of uh, well, UMass Lowell, I should say, and then at Seton Hall, and then Colgate University at Buffalo at home as well. So you're gone for a month and a day away from home, and then all of a sudden we got home, home, road, home, home. So four out of five at home to start off December. Bring me into that portion of the schedule and what those games create for you, including the fact that you have the opportunity of hosting Colgate in the University at Buffalo which gives us some New York non-conference, you know, fun games between people that don't have to drive that far. Yeah, you know, um, 
it would be nice to be home, like you said, after, after a, a stretch in November where we're getting a whole bunch of frequent flyer miles, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, hope and hopefully by that time we've we've learned a lot about our team and um, you know our playing style and made the made some of the appropriate adjustments that we need. Um, that there will be a little bit of growth in, in who we are on both ends of the floor. Um, that our culture will continue to to grow and solidify. Um, and again, having four out of five games at home, you know, for us is going to be huge. Um, you know, going into January, you'd like to start playing some of your better basketball. Um, and then for you know the only road game to be at Seton Hall, which um, you know is a place that's that's near and dear to to, to my heart and to Maya's heart, um, and do it in New Jersey where. Um, you know, we have a couple Jersey kids on our roster and, and are going to continue to recruit and um, add players from that area. Um, you know, even the kids who are who are just from, you know, the, the Brooklyn and, and Rockland County area, an opportunity for them to play closer to home, um, you know, is, is going to be really, really exciting to go against one of the better teams um, that will be coming out of the Big East this year. So, um, you know, definitely a good time for us to hopefully be playing some of our better basketball because um, we're going to need to be against some really good opponents. Yeah, and like you said, Maya, and for you, uh, Seton Hall, near and dear to you, and, and knowing that uh, you joined that staff as the director of player development for the women's basketball program prior to the 2014-15 season. So we're literally talking about a decade in between of when you went into Seton Hall and now coming into Lemoyne and going back into uh, Seton Hall. So just what that moment you anticipate might be like for you. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I mean, you know, obviously you haven't been able to work for, you know, Tony Bazella for, you know, for five years. Um, you know, he took over the program at, at a point where um, there was room for growth. And, and I was I was so happy to be a part of it. Uh, made back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments, won a Big East championship, um, you know, and, you know, made a few NITs. Um, and, you know, it, it was it was my pleasure to be a part of of setting the foundation for some of the success that he's had um, to this day. Um, and to be able to recruit Maya there uh, and watch her develop into the player that she was. Uh, you know, she was a thousand point scorer in college. It was three of the first three of her first years were at Seton Hall. So, um, you know, to kind of be a part of all that, um, obviously from Jersey. Um, so a little bit of a homecoming anytime I get to play in the Garden State. Um, so, you know, really excited to um, bring our, our players down there. Uh, for what I'm sure is always going to be a really fun environment. And then the the final non-conference game, we'll see LeMoyne women's basketball on the road at Princeton against the Tigers on the final day of the year, December 31st on a Tuesday at noon Eastern time. And you talk about, obviously, you know, your your home and connecting to New Jersey. So just bring me into that, that final game before we start NEC play. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you end the year and the non-conference schedule with a bang. Um, you know, Princeton's developed into one of the, uh, and I think it's disrespectful to call them a mid-major power. I mean, they're they're a power in the country. I mean, they're going to be, uh, you know, a top 25 team at some point this year. Um, you know, they're in the thick of things in the Ivy every year. Um, you know, it's it's going to be... It's to be an unbelievable test to play against an unbelievably well-coached, tough, physical um, team to, to end our non-conference season. So um, super excited about that. Um, you know, again, hope, hopefully we can uh, end the season putting our best foot forward, end the non-conference season putting our best foot forward um, and, and playing really well as we kind of head into into league play. We don't have to, we don't have to leave the area. After the game, we'll kind of stick around, spend New Year's Day, New Year's Eve in New Jersey, um, and kind of make the long hour trek to Brooklyn to kind of prepare for uh, prepare for conference play, where you know everything really counts at that point. Yeah, and once you start off the conference season in the NEC at LIU in Brooklyn at Mercyhurst, who just joined the conference and just came up like Lemoyne to Division One. So Erie PA, they'll be in year one. Lemoyne will be in year two in the transition to Division One, And then at St. Francis in Loretto, Pennsylvania. So we'll see you, like you said, go from New Jersey over to Brooklyn. Three road games to start the NEC. But after that, five of six NEC games will be at home. So bring me into the NEC schedule that starts off three road and then five out of six at home. You know, playing those road games when school is not in session, you know, really not the worst thing in the world. Um, gives us an opportunity to 
um, spend a lot more time together and, and bond and grow um, and, and work out some of those kinks because obviously the, the non-conference season and the conference season are just completely different animals. Um, they present their own set of challenges. Um, there's obviously a sense of familiarity um, for some of our players, not for me because I really don't know, haven't coached against any of these teams, right? So, uh, But it will give us an opportunity to kind of grow um, together as, as we start on the road. Um, and then, like you said, you know, having a five out of six or so at, at home, um, you know, good, good time of year to, to be doing that with, uh, you know, classes getting a little bit closer to being in session. Don't really want to spend too much time in, in January, um, you know, on the road, you know, in, 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 in central New York. Um, so it'll, it'll be good for us to, um, you know, again, start to get to the point where we should be hitting our stride and and getting ready for um you know to reach that halfway point of the season that that conference season uh you know playing some really really good basketball and in the season uh, from there after the five out of six at home then we will see you uh, take to the road for another three game stint but you get to end the regular season with three out of four at home in syracuse new york on ted grant court liu Central Connecticut State, then you'll be at Stonehill, and then FDU at home. Just to, to that effect, from February 22nd to March 6th, before the NEC tournament, that we get to see you at home for another big opportunity in the NEC. You got five of six at home, you go on the road, then you got three of four at home. So it seems like you got these bulk pieces of the schedule where you get to be in front of your crowd. And, and I, I love the point that you brought up going on the road during break, which means it'll be quieter in their arenas, but that when they come to Le Moyne, it's going to be louder because the students will be back. So just what, how the rest of that schedule and how the end of the schedule looks like for you. Yeah, I, I sure hope it will be. And, you know, I, I think it's up to us to make sure that we're putting a product forward um, that people want to come out and see. And, and I think we're, we're in a process of doing that. Uh, we've got some hardworking, talented young women um, who, who are really bought into what we're doing. Um, so by the time we get to that point in the schedule that, that you're talking about, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that, um, you know, our home crowd is, is bringing the energy that we need. Um, if we're playing the type of basketball that we hope to be playing that time of year, um, you know, we're going to need to create a home court advantage for us. Um, cause you know, a couple of those schools that, uh, that you mentioned that will be closing out the conference schedule with, um, you know, I, I'd venture to say are going to be picked to be pretty high in the league. Um, and if we're going to um, earn anything after um, that, those games, um, you know, we're going to have to be playing well and, and get some wins um, to, you know, earn extra games in the NC tournament. And then if we do, if we handle our business, hopefully we earn a couple home games as well. You have some players returning like the Hayden Roberts and the Sierra Lennons and so on and so forth of the world. Last season in the first season, in transition from NE10 Division II to NEC Division One, not only did this team perform well, they went and lost only one game in conference play. And I believe 14-2 and two in the NEC, in the first year in the NEC, played in the NEC championship game in the NEC tournament. I was there for that game, and, and obviously Sacred Heart's not in the conference anymore, but that was the game that uh, that they were up against. Does any of that mean anything to you? Because I, I know you weren't here. I know some of the student athletes were, and obviously Katie was. But how do you kind of view that? Do you pick Katie's brain and, and the student athletes and say, how did you get here? What did you guys kind of do? What were the things that worked? Or do you say, hey, it's great that y'all made the championship game last year, but this is a total clean slate? Yeah, um, you know, to be totally honest, it, it, it doesn't really matter a whole lot for, for a few reasons. Uh, even if I had been a part of it, um, every team and every year is, is completely different. Um, different roster, different opponents, and, and di you know, different teams in the league this year. Uh, some teams in, some teams out. Uh, you know, for me being new and um, uh, uh, at almost half of our roster – basically half of our roster being new as well. Yeah. Um, you know, their experiences are going to be completely different. Uh, the, the identity of this team um, is going to be completely different. And, and I, I hope we're fortunate enough 
to experience the some of the level of success that um, you know Coach Grimes and her staff and, and, and her team had a year ago. Um, but we're we're a different group, and we're going to do it you know a, a different way. And, and hopefully, when you know the 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 tides settle, that you know we're we're upholding the standard um, that you know that that we believe that uh, you know we're capable of. And we hear about the standard, and I know that you and Nate Champion, the men's basketball head coach, are trying to raise the bar with what's coming up this season in November with the tip-off dinner. We're going to discuss that and play rapid fire with Nick DiPillo in this edition of the Dolphin Dive inside of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora right after this. Here's a message from Renee from Brian's Landing, located on 6523 East Seneca Turnpike in Jamesville, New York. Open Tuesdays and Wednesdays for dinner, Thursday through Saturday for lunch and dinner, and Sundays for brunch. It's a lot like the way that my mom and dad ran their restaurant. We have put in place a lot of people that are family to us, very similar to how my dad hired people that were family to him. And then the tradition I'm carrying on is, is a lot of the items that are on our menu are my dad's. And he taught our chefs how to recreate his dishes. So I think that Tommy McNerney, who our executive chef is, to him it is an art. And I think that when he does create a dish, it's not just about making the food taste delicious, which is definitely our priority, but it's an art to him. And it's, it's almost like his canvas on a plate where he just wants the colors to look great. And people love it because he, and he takes pride in that. And Brian and I appreciate that. We want it to obviously look good and taste good. I will tell you when we opened up, it was six weeks before COVID. And what was amazing was the community, our friends and family stepped up and everybody did take out, everybody supported us. Our hearts were just so filled. So to Brian and I, obviously our friends come all the time and we just have repeat customers in, in Jamesville. And I think people going to our previous restaurant in Green Lakes, are making the trip to come to Brian's Landing to support us. And I mean, I think we have great food and a great atmosphere. So it's very, very important to us. Head to Brian's Landing, located on 6523 East Seneca Turnpike in Jamesville, New York, where memories have become recipes that are now meals to share with you. Tuesdays and Wednesdays for dinner, Thursday through Saturday for lunch and dinner, and on Sundays for brunch. And be sure to come out for live music Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Here is a special message from Brian Bruno, owner of Servomation Refreshments Incorporated. I grew up in the family business. You know, I had the experience of working for a national food service company with thousands of employees. And uh, as much as I enjoyed the experience I had, there was something about you know owning my own company and being able to change the things I saw wrong with the industry firsthand, which is why I moved back to my hometown in Canastota, New York, to launch Servomation. It was back in 2007. When we first started the business in 07, really you didn't find any machines with credit card readers. There's a lack of variety in machines. You got stuck with basically whatever the vending company wanted to sell that day. There's a lot of inefficiencies in the business and those were all things that we saw as opportunities both from a customer level to improve and from an operating level to be more efficient. We've really been at the forefront of introducing retail technology into our space. We were doing self-checkout back in 2009 uh, before it really became a national phenomenon. The whole point of it isn't to just improve the customer experience, it's to make it feel more like a retail environment where people don't have to be afraid of what they're buying behind glass, they don't have to be afraid of not being able to see the ingredients of the packages. It was an easy transaction from that standpoint. If we were to reinvent something, we wanted to make sure what we were making looked and felt more like a deli and not like something that you would traditionally see in a vending machine. I was tired of, of hearing for years the customers say the wheel of death because the vending machine would circle around with the same tuna salad in it. What we wanted to do was it, it really change the perception of that food. So allowing customers to touch it, allowing customers to feel the weight of it, allow customers to see the freshness of it, and also the variety of it really helps them change the perception and ultimately the value of what we bring to them. 
the point of differentiation you have to make is either in value or, or the quality. And I think on both of those fronts, Servimation has really, in large part, changed that value system for employees. So they no longer have to worry about bringing their food from home or having to leave their desk during the day and, and rush out to get back in time for their break to end. We're bringing something that they can count on in their break room every day, and they know it's going to be there, they know it's going to be fresh, and they don't have to worry about it being sold out or something that they don't enjoy. We've also heavily invested in flavored water machine so you can get a glass of water with a fresh piece of fruit in it along with bean to cup coffee machine so there's not a day that goes by we're not surprised when we get customers that call us and say we didn't know you could do all this we're really lucky to have a strong group of dedicated employees most of our employees have been with us since inception they're family to us and people like doing business with people they like and trust and i think the same thing goes for employees in a day and an age where there's a lot of corporations that just look at an employee as a number and don't get to know them that's just not the way I was raised or, or how I like to do business. So we're a little old fashioned. We like getting close to our employees. We like knowing how we can help them. We like knowing how we can improve their lives, adjust their schedules, you know, whatever it may be to help improve their quality of life. And we think in the end that makes for a, a happier employee. We're fortunate enough to have really grown over the last several years and from Pennsylvania to Massachusetts to Connecticut, we really do have a strong connection even though we're not in, in the rooms every day with these employees. There's not one single employee that we feel like we don't know. And certainly we know they can call us at any time. And they're definitely treated as family to us. I wake up every single day really excited to you know, surprise our customers in a good way. The one thing I can tell you is I, I think that every one of our employees and every one of our customers will continue to be at the forefront of every decision we make. Find out how Servomation can help you and your business by going to Servomation.com. And a welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. And of course, we are here in this edition of the Dolphin Dive with Nick DePillo, picture in picture with the Lemoyne Dolphins women's basketball head coach in his first season on the Heights here in 2024-25. The tip-off dinner is something new. Now, I've had some history with tip-off dinners with my alma mater of Marywood University, so I know how incredibly important they can be and what they can bring to the team in so many different ways. So I'm very excited that just announced we will have a tip-off dinner, men's and women's basketball, Nate Champion, the head coach of the men's team, Nick DiPillo, the head coach of the women's team, and obviously the staffs and, and the players, uh, the student-athletes will be a part of it as well. So Nick, I'd love to just hear from you why you're doing this and what you're hoping to get from this experience and just what you can tell us about the tip-off dinner that's going to be happening in November. Yeah, it was one of the first things Nate and I talked about uh, when I arrived here a few months ago is, is getting this off the ground. Um, and, and for us, the, the main purpose is to um, introduce both of our rosters to the, the local community um, and, and give um, friends, family, alumni, supporters, um, an opportunity to put names with the faces um, and give them an opportunity to support, you know, our young men and our young women. Um, I, I think both of our teams um, are going to represent Lemoyne and and the Syracuse area uh, in, in, in the right way. Uh, I think we're both going to put competitive teams on the floor that are going to be entertaining um, and um, going to want to bring people out on a consistent basis. Um, and, you know, just like I said, to have an opportunity before both teams kind of kick off the craziness of the year um, to, to celebrate the, the work we put in in the preseason. And like I said, introduce those teams to, um, you know, friends and family and, and alum and supporters, um, you know, we thought was really, really important to, to be able to do. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's huge, you know, to, to let the community know who they're going to be rooting for and give them reasons why they should root for these student athletes far beyond how many points and rebounds and, and whatnot that they have. I, I think it's an awesome, awesome chance to really build connections network, which is ever important. Life is about relationships. And I think this tip off dinner can help to create those. No, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, we always say, you know, at some point for all of our kids, uh, the men and the women, the, the balls and the stop bouncing and, and the relationships that you create, um, and the network that you build through these, through um, utilizing basketball, you know, during your college years is, is going to be everything that kind of set you up for the rest of your life. Um, you know, we're going to have some really cool silent auction items, um, some experiences that involve road trips with the teams, um, golf outings, 
um, things of that nature. So um, an opportunity to, you know, not only enjoy an unbelievable night with, with our young men, our women, young women, um, but to have a good meal and, 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 and help support both of our programs, um, you know, do some really great things as we um, continuously strive to raise the, uh, the, the, st the total student athlete experience for our, our, young, our young men, young women. And I want to let everybody know here for the Lemoyne basketball tip-off dinner, it will be on November 2nd of this year. It's from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And for those of you wondering about the exact day of the week, that's going to be a Saturday. So we'll see you on Saturday, November 2nd, and that is 5 to 9 p.m. Once again, to preview the 2024-25 men's and women's basketball seasons for family, friends, alumni, and supporters, you can register online by going to dolphinsonline.org. That's dolphinsonline.org. With that being said, Coach, rapid fire time. You get to ask the first question. What do you got for me? Oh, wow. Um, who you got winning uh, the World Series this year? Well, I got to go with the first thing in my head, and that's the New York Yankees. It's who I picked in my prediction, but – I uh, am very sad my Arizona Diamondbacks did not take care of business. And <laughs> I did some history, uh, it's a little history lesson. Uh, Brendan Murphy and I, the do DT and Murphy on Wake Up Call on Mondays, I said to Brendan, when was the last time that the two teams that advanced to a World Series didn't even make the postseason the next season? And in 2005, the Chicago White Sox blanked the Astros 4 to nothing in the World Series, and then in 2006, neither one made it. So I believe that almost 20 years ago was the last time it happened. And am, am I sad that the Rangers didn't make it? And all respect to the fans, and I'm, I'm a fan of Arlington, I'm not sad that they didn't make it. <laughs> but on the Diamondback side, that was heartbreaking because my mom and I were planning to go out to Arizona together. And uh, my dad and I have been out to Arizona. My mom and I have not been out to Arizona together on a trip so a little sad but 89 wins I'm not going to be upset about it and you know our our second second guy to Zach Gallen Merrill Kelly only played in 13 games and was hampered by injuries this season and I think you know needing a game or two at the end of the season he probably could have given it to the Diamondbacks so sad about it but uh, you know soft spot for the Yankees because of my dad and my grandpa so I, as an impartial broadcaster, picked the Yankees, not because of family, but because of talent. And I went Yankees and Padres. But I, I mean, it, it could be Yankees, Phillies, but I'm going to say either way, whether it's the Phillies, the Padres, whoever, I think the Yankees are going to take home another World Series, which I think will give them 28 at this 28. point. Yeah. 28. Yeah, I hope so. They, uh, they were up one nothing earlier then gave up four in the bottom of the third or fourth i think so looks like it might be tied after tonight so hopefully they can uh they can rebound <laughs> absolutely my question for you who's going to win the men's division one ncaa tournament this season <laughs> oh geez <laughs> um that's a good one ah <sighs> you know I'm partial toward him because he's a Jersey guy and he has uh, the way he does things translates regardless of who he's coaching and who he coaches against. Um, and, and I think that opportunity to chase history is something that's going to keep that team and program um, uniquely motivated um, in a way that no one ever has before. So I think, Having the opportunity to three-peat, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with UConn. Um, okay. you know, I, I think you know, Coach Hurley is one of the best to do it. Um, I think he's he's always been vastly underrated. I, I knew him um, as as an assistant um, as when he was young as 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 a high school coach. Uh, I knew him when he was at Wagner. I knew him when he was at Rhode Island. Um, and to see him um, do everything he's done um, with it, with that UConn program, um, you know, in this day and age, to um, just consistently affect winning and draw um, young the the best out of his young men, 
um, is is it's it's awesome that you know you can still stick to who you are um, in this day and age and and, and evolve and, and get the most out of your player. So um, you know I I, I think having an opportunity to, to win three in a row um, is something that he's going to be um, make sure he reminds his kids of every day in every drill of every practice that they do. And, and I think he's, if I, I think it's so wide open, but if I had to put my money on someone, let me put it on someone who's been there before and has done it. Yeah. That answer makes perfect sense. What's your second question? <laughs> Which means they're not going to win it. Now that I, <laughs> so, so it's fine. So, so coach, I apologize for putting the hex on you. So what's your, what's your next question for me? Uh, we are approaching fall and yeah. You know, it's probably not too long before the snow hits the ground. So um, give me one of your favorite fall activities um, in, in this area. Oh, yeah. Well, being an October baby and mm -hmm. uh, knowing that this year I will return, thank God and God willing, to the day I was born of the week, which I was born on a Monday at 837 a.m. So I will... Okay be back on a Monday this year. And so I will be celebrating my birthday. What do I like to do in the fall? I am not a big dessert guy. Okay. I keep it away from myself, but I could see myself for a little birthday celebration, going to beacon skiff and getting the cider donuts that are fantastic. Okay. So, so I would say I'd probably go up there. I already got pumpkins out front in my house, but I like the pumpkin picking stuff. And yeah. honestly, yeah, I'm a big kid. So I would say, you know, I could very easily be in good company and make some leaf angels and just jump in a pile of leaves and have a okay. good time. Okay. Yeah, I got the pumpkins outside of my house. Uh, now we had the team over. Uh, this weekend, we did a little pumpkin carving contest. So there's a few um, pumpkins out there right now. And I did just look. I have one more year to wait until the day my birthday matches up to the day I was born. So, um, you know, that will be next year for me. And what's what's the day? October 24th. So, so okay. So we're sharing that week together. Yeah. And so next year, you'll be on. So you were born on a Friday. A Friday. All right. So look at that. Bookends. I was born on a Monday. You were born on a Friday. Yeah. There you go. My question back to you based off of what you said, and sorry to put you on the spot. Yeah. But who had the best pumpkin that was carved by the team? And who was the one where the where you were like, we're, we'll put it outside. We're just going to turn it around. Yeah. You know, we, um, so we had four, um, we voted on them and the winning team, let me just pick, pick let me take a peek at it. The, oh yeah. The winning team, was um our juniors so uh zara jess uh actually i should say our sophomore zara jess and i and sid um they did this really cool pac-man pumpkin um where they had you know pac-man and the little things chasing the ghost it, it, it was pretty good um you know our, our our seniors uh did not do um the <laughs> best uh carving work Okay. Um, I appreciated the effort and I appreciated the, uh, the thought they put into it. Um, but you know, they, you know, someone, someone had to lose and, and, and it was definitely, it was, it was, you know, M and Bree and, and, and Mia. So, um, you know, I'd say better luck next year, but you know, that was your last shot at it. I think. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I like it. What's, I like the Pac-Man. That's good. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good too. What's your last question? Oh, last one for you. Yeah. Um, I think you're by virtue where you where we live you're i'm assuming you're a bills fan no okay no. all right no well i was gonna go who's you know we're four weeks in you know who's your, who's your pick who's your pick to uh to make a run to the super bowl well i mean if i'm going with the refs i'm going with kansas city and yeah. you know i mean I, kansas city and, and again they're a very good team. They also oh, yeah. get they also get Jordan calls, and, <laughs> and and I know that Shaq used to get Shaq calls, but he didn't always oh. get them. 
<laughs> but like, but Jordan almost all like if he got three or four fouls in a game, the he just look at a ref like, do you know who I am? And I mean, let's remember that one of the most notable shots he's ever taken in his career, he dribbles to the to the left side. He's on he's on the left wing. Byron Russell's in front of him of the Jazz. He pushes Byron out of the way and then takes the shot. And in slow motion, it's like, got the ball with the left hand, get out of my way with the right hand, shot. And, I mean, obviously you can't do that, but it's Jordan. So I feel like the refs, when they watch Jordan, they're so, I mean, I, they just kind of forgot that they were ref at a game. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think Kansas City – I think that Houston is a threat to Kansas City, and I think that Baltimore is a threat to Kansas City. And I would like to say that Buffalo is, but if I had to pick right now in this moment, I'll say what I said going into the season. Kansas City would be my pick on the AFC side, but I think Houston's a real threat, and I don't know why the rest of the NFL allowed Lamar Jackson to get Derrick Henry. That was yeah. just insane. On the NFC side... The doors are very wide open. Yeah. San Francisco is not great. And Green Bay is doing some good things. I would honestly say feet to the fire in this moment. And this might have some people loving me. And it might have some people thinking I'm nuts. The guy who I said would be the best rookie quarterback this season I'm going to pick his team. If I had to pick it today, okay. I'm going to say the Washington Commanders. Yeah. They're just, I like that. They're just I like good. that. You know, you, you got to think that San Francisco, if they get healthy, and if they don't get CMC back, it doesn't really matter. They're not winning anything anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, the, the way uh, – I'm a Giants fan, but, you know, you watch New York football. So, the way Darnold's playing right now. Yeah. They're, they're going to be dangerous out there. I agree. My last question for you. I'm October 21st. You're October 24th. Whatever you pick, you have my word. How do we celebrate our birthdays jointly? <laughs> uh, you know, I can't think of the last time I've celebrated. I've really, truly celebrated uh, my birthday because it's always in a, it's like the fringe of basketball season yeah uh man yeah you know, yeah it's gonna be at this time of year it's it's always gonna involve a good meal so you know that's probably that's, that's the easiest way for me to go so we'll get some food sounds good to me all right fair enough are we going are we going back to familiar digs or are we picking a new place yeah it's there's enough places to try something new all right so we're gonna we're gonna try something new i'm gonna actually i got a do you like barbecue? I don't eat meat, oh, so eat it kind of limits if okay. it limits things a little bit. All right, so now I'll get creative. I got some okay. thoughts. We'll figure okay. it out for you. All right. So yeah, we're gonna. But I told you, you pick it. You got my word. So okay. we're gonna celebrate our birthdays, and uh, I believe that Nate said he's gonna pay. So that's good enough <laughs> for me. He makes more than the both of us, so it's fine. There you go, Nate. <laughs> So uh, with that being said, Nick DiPillo in this edition of the Dolphin Dive. Lemoyne Dolphins women's basketball head coach in his first season on the Heights going into 2024-25. We went through the schedule, gave you the tip-off dinner, some rapid fire, and as always, just a great time with someone who I'm very blessed that I believe uh, we all should be to have here in the community. So Nick, you already know how I feel about you. I appreciate your time and have a lot of respect for you. So thanks for what you do. And I'm excited to see for what it's going to look like this year. No, I appreciate you and everything you do to not promote not only our, our program, but all of the athletic programs at LeMoyne. Um, you know, we, we, we all definitely appreciate you. So, uh, so thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. All right, man. You will. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Take care. That coming from Nick DiPillo here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports truly meets that thing called life. And we are going to be taking our final step aside of today's broadcast here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. And we'll wrap things up right after this.
Here is a message from Fire Pit Barbecue and Saloon, located on 264 New York Route 48 in Fulton, New York. The aroma from the fire pit itself, you can smell it and it just makes you want to come in and get the food. I feel like when you walk in the door, it's just very welcoming from the employees to the atmosphere. We make it fresh every day, full of flavor, and you can get it plain and still has so much flavor, or you can choose from one of our many sauces, so you can get the same plate at the table, but each person can have a different flavor to it. When I first walked in, before the place was even open, I came in and talked to the manager, and she just made me feel like, just feels really comfortable, feels like a family. We work as a team, we work together, we do bands on the weekends, Friday, Saturday nights. We are doing trivia on Tuesday nights. Monday night, we're going to be doing some karaoke. So there's a lot of different things for kind of everybody. Once a month, Dan Totora is going to be in here hosting his show with special guests from the sports community. Stop on down to Fire Pit Barbecue and Saloon. We are open seven days a week, located at 264 New York Route 48 in Fulton. We also offer catering. Feel free to give us a call, 315-402-2004. Avicoli's, located on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, has been your trusted neighbor for decades. Located just steps from Liverpool High School, we're happy to have the Liverpool Warriors on-site, on-location broadcast at Avicoli's through Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora every single month, featuring student athletes, coaches, and administration throughout the year from Liverpool High School. Head out to Avicoli's today on the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York, open Tuesday through Sunday for lunch, dinner, and drinks. We'd love to see you out there. And of course, you can call them at 315-622-5100 for takeout, delivery, and catering. That's 315-622-5100. And also find them on myavicolis.com. That's my A-V-I-C-O-L-L-I-S.com. Having peace of mind when you're out of town, that your furry loving friend is safe and sound, means taking them to Canine Campground. Because we all know that when it comes to the love of our pets, it goes well beyond the call of duty to make sure they're safe and sound. Right, Lily? So take a ride to 242 Johnson Street in East Syracuse, New York, and see Canine Campground and where your dog will be staying in the classic cabin, the executive cabin, the grand cabin, or of course, the luxury cabin, because if you know Lily, you know she loves luxury. <laughs> now you don't have to wait to the last minute to find a family member or a friend that'll take your dog for a few days. Call Canine Campground at 315-299-4013. That's 315-299-4013. Their drop-off and pickup times are Monday through Sunday. Check K9 campground.com for more information that's the letter k the number nine and campground spelled with a k.com k9 campground.com when you're going out of town bring your dog to k9 campground Carvel DeWitt, it's what happy tastes like. Do you know why? Because we make ice cream. Creamy, rich, flavorful ice cream. Not yogurt or iced milk like some of our competitors. Ice cream. Fresh, by hand, daily. For the calorie conscious, we have something new for you. Our new Carvelite. Same great flavor, creaminess, and texture of our regular ice cream with only 35 calories an ounce. So whether you want an ice cream cake, flying saucer, dasher, carvalanche, hard or soft ice cream, we will satisfy your craving with our fresh, handmade, regular, or new Carvelite ice cream. Carvel DeWitt. It's what happy tastes like. The Wildcat Sports Club in Camillus, New York, is located on 3680 Milton Avenue in the Home Depot Plaza. It is your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant. Folks, some sports bars aren't family-friendly. Some family-friendly restaurants are not sports bars. The Wildcat Sports Club in Camillus, New York, is proud to be both. It is that marriage that you've been looking for for years. The Wildcat Sports Pub is your home base 
for your sports bar and restaurant needs, games for the kids, indoor and outdoor activities, and enough things on the menu to come back every single week and get to try something new. They're open Sundays from noon to 8 p.m., Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to midnight. For reservations and party information, call 315 315- 487-2222 for the Wildcat family-friendly sports pub and restaurant. GG Cards and Breaks Like, comment, subscribe GG Cards and Breaks coming to you on 639 Delmar Place in Syracuse, New York is your one-stop sports card and trading card shop. Find GG Cards and Breaks open for you Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 6 and on Sundays from 10 to 5, always with something amazing to offer you, be it singles, packs, boxes, graded cards. They have every MLB, NBA, and NFL team. That's 92 franchises with their own box. That's a lot of effort. It's a lot of time. And it's a lot of love. So whoever you're a fan of, go and check out the box or whoever, you know, whatever individual player or players you're a fan of. Maybe you're an Astros fan, but you like this guy in the Yankees and you like this guy in the Padres and go through all those boxes, find something really cool. And they're not just basic cards. You can find numbered cards, rookies, autographs, so many great things in those boxes. And they have the new arrivals box. They have the graded cards that are within some of the cases. They have the graded cards that are right out there on the table for you to check out. They also have Magic the Gathering, Disney Larkana, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon while supplies last. So you'll find so many great things at GG Cards and Breaks by heading there today and supporting a place that supports our community with a wonderful staff and a lot of hard work. 639 Delmar Place in Syracuse, New York, Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 6, and on Sundays from 10 to 5. With that being said, I want to thank you for tuning in to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. You can find us every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube.com and Facebook.com, both backslash Wake Up Call DT and on Wake Up Call DT.podbean.com. Once the shows go live, they hop into the archives and you can find us on Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts, Player FM, Podbean, Podchaser.com, Podvine, Spotify, TuneIn, and YouTube. All you have to do on any one of these channels is search Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora or one word, Wake Up Call DT. And a big time thank Thanks to the Brooklyn Pickle down on 1788 Old Morganton Road in Southern Pines, North Carolina, right down the road from the Pinehurst Golf Course. Uh, incredible beacon of golf to the country and the world. And you'll find right down the road, Brooklyn Pickle, 1788 Old Morganton Road in Southern Pines, North Carolina. And a big thanks to our incredible partners in Central and Upstate New York. Carvel DeWitt, the Wildcat Sports Pub, Servo Mation. Mother's Cupboard, Canine Camp Dog Daycare, Mon Paz, the snack capital of the world, Chick-fil-A Cicero, GG Cards and Breaks, Pizza Man, Canine Campground Dog Boarding, Avicoli's, Fire Pit Barbecue and Saloon, Great Lakes Honda City, Brian's Landing, and of course, Wake Up Call is the exclusive multimedia marketing partner of your LeMoyne College Dolphins, Brian and Stratton College of Syracuse Bobcats, and the Binghamton University Bearcats. Find all of these wonderful schools by going to youtube.com backslash wakeupcalldt. Click subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll find the Lemoyne playlist, the BSC Syracuse playlist, and the Binghamton playlist. You can also find all of these institutions on wakeupcalldt.com's homepage and underneath the exclusive partners tab. For more information, go to lemoynedolphins.com. Syracuse, uh, pardon me, yeah, Syracuse.bscbobcats.com and the bubearcats.com. For now, for Wake Up Call, thank you so much for tuning in, and we appreciate you all around the country and around the world. God bless, no stress, 